there are many game franchises that went away to come back differently. As much as we want to see our favorite characters return in perpetuity, some stories are not meant to go on forever, and shouldn't. Sometimes it's not just the stories and characters that have run their course. The style in which some games are made seem to have come with expiration dates. It doesn't necessarily mean that the formula isn't working, however the end of its offerings may have been reached. More of the same even if it's working is not always a good thing. Changing a beloved game into something that strays far away from what it was in its inception can come with a lot of risk. The IP has to be in a very specific place in its lifespan for this to be even worth considering. Heavily changing both gameplay and the way in which a story is told can drastically make or break the end product's reception. The characters are remembered in a very specific way. Changing how they act changes the entire feel of the game. Tomb Raider experienced a change much like this during the beginnings of the narrative-driven third-person genre taking over the public interest. There had been more than 10 Tomb Raider games starring Lara Croft that were released over the course of 15 plus years before it was rebooted under Crystal Dynamics. This gameplay style carried Tomb Raider all the way to 2013. Lara Croft was a very developed character. You knew what you were getting buying a Tomb Raider game. Before the reboot was announced, Lara Croft was very far out of the conversation in a post-Uncharted world. She was about to come back in a brand new light. Crystal Dynamics chose to drop the hyper-arcade feeling gameplay in exchange for something that fell in line with what Uncharted had offered in its initial trilogy. A heavier focus on telling its story with more believable characters and lessening its more fantasy-focused elements. Tomb Raider 2013 went on to sell around 15 million copies and get multiple sequels. The risk came with reward. This exact kind of risk went on to benefit the ghost of Sparta in unimaginable ways. God of War has been developed within a very consistent and well-received formula since 2005 and prior to its soft reboot in 2018. It is a leading game in the industry from the mind of David Jaffe. Kratos is a general who led the Spartan army. In a fight against barbarians during what would have been a loss that cost him his life, he pleaded with Ares, the current god of war, for a power to defeat his enemies, a power which would leave him enslaved to his own nightmares and wrongdoings, becoming Ares' errand boy. Kratos' personality is something you see heavily discussed to this day. You don't have to dig deep to see why Kratos is the way that he is. It isn't for a lack of character development or writing talent. Kratos was tricked into murdering his entire family in a temple set up by Ares in an attempt to allow him to reach his ultimate potential as a warrior. The village oracle had warned Kratos not to enter said temple. As punishment for the horrific act, he was cursed to wear the ashes of his family on his skin in perpetuity. Such an act doesn't leave Kratos with much. His mind is set on the pursuit of Ares, and with that comes a single emotion, anger. It would be unrealistic for him to experience much else until he felt fulfilled. It doesn't have to mean Kratos has no depth, you just don't get to witness it often because of the uniquely painful journey he's on. I am so sorry, my love. Can you ever forgive me? God of War had some of the best action combat on the market, it was designed as a very gameplay-centric experience. Blades of Chaos as Kratos' signature weapons feel special the moment you take control of Kratos on the boat. As an action game, God of War gives you many options in how you want to play. Some would classify God of War as a hack and slash game. It's a phrase that has had its meaning lost. Hack and slash games would typically apply to action combat games with a heavy focus on melee based weapons and attacks. However, today the phrase is understood to be inferring a game has a lesser combat system that lacks depth something that can be played mindlessly with only a button or two needed for success, which is not the case for a lot of games being referred to as hack and slash. Upon revisiting God of War, you'll find that the game offers a lot of depth as you progress and unlock new abilities or a new weapon. Combining attacks provides results. The entire game cannot be completed without utilizing multiple abilities unless you opt in for a lower difficulty. David Jaffe and the Sony Santa Monica team had created something special. Something that would go on to reach many more people and make its mark in the long storied history of PlayStation's first party lineup. God of War 2 is what you should expect from a sequel. While it feels nearly identical to play, the combat depth goes even deeper. You're given a wide variety of weapons to play with that all have their own individuality. Abilities and weapon types blend together in a more seamless way allowing for many more options in battle. 
There's a greater focus on telling a bigger story with bigger moments. Sony Santa Monica was able to push the limits of the PS2 with the scale of the fights. God of War 2 tells its story in a much more diverse set of areas than its predecessor, much welcome change after the very sand-dusted areas of God of War. Kratos is still on a journey of vengeance against the gods, not even the setback of temporary death is stopping what is coming. It's a story with a surprisingly good use of time travel that doesn't overstep and overcomplicate the narrative. It has a well-written story that remains easy to follow. It's interesting to see a character like Kratos that really lives within a couple different emotions showcased as such a worthy lead. It isn't just misguided anger, you believe his motivations and undying need for absolution. God of War 3 is ultimately a very open-ended game. By the time you reach the conclusion of Kratos' god-hunting calling, you are left with Olympus in ruins, and a still unsatisfied Kratos who feels undeserving of a less blood-soaked life. In a grand sacrifice, he tried to give himself back to the world in an attempt to release Olympus of all the trauma he caused, but he survived the wound. Even in survival, the ending felt pretty definitive, it left people questioning if there was a need for another story. The original trilogy of God of War games defined a genre. For a series that started almost 20 years ago, they are still more compelling action games than a lot that have come after them. When God of War 3 reached the pinnacle of the formula, God of War Ascension revealed that the well seemed almost dry for Kratos. And so Sony Santa Monica put their heads down for the longest development cycle in God of War history. The approach taken for God of War 2018 on a surface level would seem like a step back for some. It looked like a toned down version of the combo chaining combat system we were used to. Kratos had a different cadence to his voice, and a son. Because of how God of War 3 ended, it was necessary to take the risk of honing in on the storytelling and the way that you play the game. Everything from the art style changes down to how the game is shot. God of War 2018's contrast in design from the original three games is equally as significant as the changes we see in Kratos' character. At the point in life Kratos is in, these changes feel like they come from a place of deep respect for the character. Kratos was finally in a place where a journey of self-discovery and acceptance makes sense, showing that there is depth to him, and a chance for a different life in the aftermath of all the wrong he has done. The story could not have been told this effectively in the style of old. God of War could have ended with 3 with a miserable self-loathing Kratos, but instead Sony Santa Monica took what was already great and showed that there was so much left to tell in this world. It's still very much God of War, it just also happens to be one of gaming's greatest showcases of dodging stagnancy.